Hello everyone, uh, today I will just uh, show some of the new features that we inserted on the World Atlas of Last Interglacial uh, Shorelines. Um, this is the web page of the Atlas and we can scroll down and go towards the interface by clicking on insert data. Now, uh, if you're not registered, you can register yourself as a new user. This is completely free uh, and uh, it will only require the, an email address where you can receive the activation code. And then to log in, you are asked for a CAPTCHA and then you can finally log in to the interface. Um, there are not much many news since the previous interface, uh, but uh, a couple of things have been done in terms of visualization. Uh, and, and export of data. So let's start by having a look at what's new in the publicly available data section. Uh, it takes a little bit uh, to uh, start up because we prepared an app which allows you to interrogate the public data in the database. So what is public data is uh, everything which is actually inside this Zenodo repository. Uh, this is part of the ongoing special issue in the journal Earth System Science Data. And here you basically, uh, you can download basically the data sets that are backing the word Atlas. These data sets are summarized and uh, um, showcased here. So there are two main uh, um, ways to visualize them. So one is uh, the one you're seeing here. It's a map and uh, a <coughs> time versus relative sea level uh, graph. So for example, if I zoom in in one area, you'll see that the graph uh, keeps, keeps updating. So here you have all the sea level index points that have been reported in this area. And uh, if, you, if you navigate in here, you have, uh, you have the, the uh, Wallis RSL ID for these. There are some ways to filter this data. For example, you can filter by age, for example, eliminating everything that is older than 130 kilo years. Yeah, something should be eliminated there. Um, there is the possibility to filter either by elevation, for example, or elevation error, sorry, or a final paleo sea level uncertainty. And you can decide which kind of uh, uh, relative sea level percentiles are, are um, showcased here. And also you can uh, uh, decide which kind of indicators you wanna, you wanna have in your filter. Or you can filter by geographic extent. Now, uh, if you zoom in and out on this map, you can, uh, um, you can get up to a certain point with the geographic extent. But let's say I wanna have only a very specific part of, of this island, for example, Mallorca, I will select um, from polygon draw and I will go here, draw a polygon down here and I'll see only here, I will see only the data that is, uh, uh, that is present inside, inside this polygon. Um, there are many functionalities down in, in here uh, and they, they basically allow to uh, query the data set in, data sets in many different ways. You can download uh, um, uh, either the summary table or uh, access the Wallis database to download it. Uh, the summary table, you can also, before downloading it, you can also having a look at it here. Uh, and basically uh, what you have is the area you selected in the previous map and down here you have all the sea level indicators with all the information that is uh, um, present in the in the database. This is not all the information, it's just a summary of them. If you want the entire um, set of data, uh, I would suggest you to go to the Zenodo repository and download uh, the specific data set for, uh, for example, in this case, for the Western Mediterranean. Um, and up down here, you can uh, select to download exactly as before, uh, as in the previous screen, and the current selection will be uh, um, downloaded on your um, on your uh, computer. Here you have uh, your choices in terms of filter, and here you have the data that you selected to download. Uh, it's very important to actually have um, clear that uh, each one of these points is uh, a, a point for which we have an age. So if you see different uh, right down here, there are one, two, three, four, five, six um, uh, rows with the same Wallis ID. It means it's the same unit, but dated with different uh, 
uh, with different uh, samples. So you see, for example, here that there are um, six different U-series samples. Uh, these are not summarized, these are given uh, as, they, um, as they were published. So uh, if you see several C-level index or several uh, Wallis RSL IDs here, it means that there are several dating points and you will have to summarize them in, in the way you see more fit to your uh, application. Okay. So this was the first news uh, and this is actually uh, pretty, uh, pretty cool to see that there is a way to quickly interrogate the database. This, uh, the, the points available right now are only the points uh, for which we have uh, um, already data in the Zenodo repository. More data is coming. Uh, there is more data already in the database, but they have not been assigned the DOI, so they are not in uh, in the data set because they are still private but uh, this will come as as we go forward the second news is uh, for which concerns the export my data table uh, now we changed a little bit things here to accommodate uh, um, a couple of things first of all uh, though i want to show that uh, if you want to download uh, your entire data set uh, in excel it's uh, always here so you can export the spreadsheet a message will appear that uh, it may take some time to uh, export your excel file and in fact it takes uh, at least for my data set which is about three or four hundred index points it takes a few seconds uh, but then you will see that uh, um, an excel sheet will open with all your data, basically all the data uh, as we are used to, uh, to see them uh, already uh, organized. So uh, this is the, the uh, function to export all your data. I should say that the, the big spreadsheet does not include yet the Holocene C-level data points that I described in the previews. Uh, in the previous tutorial, but uh, you have the possibility now to access each and every table that you did um, uh, or that you uh, that you have in your in your data set um, from this menu down here. So if I if I for example go to the U series data, here I have all the U series data that I used. Uh, if I click on these three points, uh, three dots, uh, I can see the details from each record. So these are all the fields. Uh, for for each record uh, and I think this is pretty useful if uh, if uh, some if you want to check your data uh, you can add uh, more columns uh, um, in the visualization there are only a few columns and this is valid for any of the tables uh, in this um, uh, in this uh, um, in this part but for example you can put here lang latitude and longitude scroll down click on apply and you will see that latitude and longitude will appear uh, a very cool thing is that we can now export also this single table as uh, an excel uh, and then uh, when it's done you can actually download it uh, and have uh, a single excel file for example only for your u series u series data also, this one, it takes a little bit because it has to go through the database and interrogate it. So it takes a little bit. Uh, but in the end, what you will be able to do is uh, um, download your own, uh, your own data set. This tags only to the data that you inserted in Wallis. And of course, there is a dynamic search field. So you can actually search by IGSN sample ID or analysis or published ID throughout your records. And you will only have um, the records that you're looking for. Um, there is also a print function. Uh, you can select columns again and uh, um, make a printout of your of your sheet. Uh, but this is basically this is basically how how it is. So if I go back down here, uh, you will see that uh, despite the Holocene data is not yet included in this big Excel file, it's included here. So we have the possibility to look at your Holocene C level data points. Uh, I have no records right now for the Holocene, so it will say that there are no records found in my uh, in my database. But uh, all of this is a, is a I think a, a, a way to actually uh, look at your data and have a look at uh, at what you are missing or what you would like to see to see in there uh, in a much quicker way than having to uh, export always the, the data sheet in Excel. So uh, the last thing, which is uh, a change in uh, um, 
the type of samples that can be inserted here. Of course, uh, uh, the other time I showed you that uh, radiocarbon and archaeological data were inserted thanks to the templates provided by the Holsey community. Uh, now, uh, thanks to Andrea Dutton and Peter Chucharavan, uh, we uh, were made aware that uh, uh, we should also include oolites as uh, U-series dated samples. Now, the, uh, there is a form for the oolites to insert the oolites. Oh, sorry, something went wrong here, but there is a form to insert the, the oolites. I'll have to, to cross-check uh, what's going on here. But uh, uh, this is very similar to the corals, except some ecological descriptors, which are, which are specific for corals. So, so you can actually insert um, oolitic samples inside your database. Uh, so this is it for uh, version 1.7.1 uh, now of, uh, of the World Atlas of Last Interglacial Shorelines. I should also mention that um, the code uh, of this uh, tool was uh, uh, realized but by Sebastian Garzon, he's a student from the University of Münster and uh, um, it's on GitHub so if you want to have a look at it uh, you can access the code on GitHub, it's, uh, it's free and you can also modify it to your needs and try to see if you can or if you, if you want to add new functionalities uh, if you're, if you're uh, not happy with the functionalities we provided you. So this is uh, everything there is uh, so far and uh, I do hope that uh, everything is clear. As usual, let us know what you think. Thank you and bye-bye.